Okay, so I have some clay here today. I'm gonna show some of the uh, benefits of spiral and ram's head wedging. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it if you're struggling with spiral wedging. If you're trying, and if you're trying to combine two pieces of clay, uh, like so, I got some clay here that I'm just wedging up, getting ready to marble together with some terracotta. And as you can see, I had a coil from yesterday that uh, I just threw back onto the uh, block of clay, and um, it's you can't separate them back into two pieces now; they're kind of stuck together. So I'll have to wedge these two pieces together, and I'll show you the two main kind of wedging techniques. Okay, here's Hazel; she's here to smell the clay. Um, the first one is called ram's head wedging and this is what potters usually learn first before they learn to spiral because spiral wedging does take a little bit more of an experienced touch to it, okay? It is a little more confusing, it is a little more difficult to get in the rhythm of spiral wedging, but once you do, you'll, you won't want to go back to ram's head wedging. Um, with that being said, you still do use both, so it still is important to know how to do both. Um, just over time you'll see that spiral wedging uh, is a little more effective for both small and large amounts of clay. Um, first things first, let's go over ram's head wedging, okay? Ram's head wedging is called ram's head wedging because once you start homogenizing the clay in this manner, it all, it all, the shape, the form of the clay that you're making while you're ram's head wedging will resemble that of uh, a ram's horns and a ram's uh, facial structure. Um, as you'll see, it's kind of the horn here and the face of the ram here. This is good for initially getting your ball of clay going when you're wedging, and it is good for finally shaping the clay when you're ready to make, to, to make it into a shape that you're going to attach to the wheel head. So after you're done spiral wedging, for example, you give it a few more like this, and then I'll start rolling the clay out. And as you can see, you'll start forming a shape that's more... Uh, agreeable for attaching to the top of the wheel head. That's kind of the, the shape I'll start with on the actual wheel head, okay? So, the main thing you want to focus on when you're ram's head wedging is pushing at an angle into the table and then peeling back. It's almost sort of like the Nike sign is what I've seen uh, as an example for the angle that you're pressing into the clay. So first things first, put your hands together and when you are wedging, use your entire body, okay? Unless you're a stronger man, uh, it's going to be tough to ram's head wedge with your arms. I did this a lot when I first started, and uh, you'll get sweating. Wedging is one of the hardest physical things that you'll do as a potter. Um, that's why people get pug mills once they get to the point where they can afford one, because wedging clay is actually what maybe one of the things that taxes your body the most as a potter, okay? So one thing you can do to offset that is don't arm wedge. Use your whole body to wedge. Okay, so first things first, put your hands together and you're pushing with the heels of your hands right here and you're pushing into the clay, rolling up and pushing back again. And you wanna get into a rhythm. Whether you're spiral or ram's head wedging, it should be very rhythmic. Rhythm is what's going to uh, speed up this process for you. So. Push your entire body into it at an angle down into the table. Then with your fingers here, pull back up. Readjust your palms and push again. As you can see like I'm doing right now, go very slow at first. Get the technique down. And once you got it, make sure you're pushing in, on, in this way with your hands and down. Boom. Now once you get it, speed up a little bit. Rock your whole body back and forth. Put your body weight into this, okay? And once you have the rhythm of it down, once you have the movement down, speed up a little bit. Okay? This is a good way to wedge your clay and smaller amounts of clay if you need to. If you're just starting out, you don't have a pug wheel and you need to homogenize your clay before you're throwing it on the wheel. This eventually will get through and um, remove all the air bubbles from your clay, okay? Now once you've got this down, a lot of people make a big deal out of spiral wedging because it is a little bit harder. but if you're looking to spiral wedge, to learn how to spiral wedge, and you do know how to ram's horn, we ram's horn wedge already, then the only thing you haven't done is spent enough time. Because I actually started spiral wedging on accident when I was ram horns wedging one day. You actually do have the basic movement down. It is very similar, but now you're, you're adding a lateral um, movement to what you're already doing here. 
left and right, which is overall going to make the whole movement a little more circular. It's going to be like an ellipse. So think of the same angle we were just taking. It was on two dimensions, this way and a little bit up. This angle and back and a little bit up. Now basically you're going to be doing the same thing with adding an ellipse, adding a little back and forth sway into it, and your hands are going to be a little different, okay? So instead of having your hands on the side and having any open clay here in the middle, what you're going to do is your hands are going to come together, okay? And you're actually going to hug your hands together, and within here, this ball of clay is, what, is what's going to make up the head of your spiral wedging, okay? So first things first, I'll do it slow. Hands come together, and we press down and forward into the table, okay? Now from here, this is, this is the movement everybody struggles with and everybody finds spiral wedging more difficult than ram's head wedging. You're going to pull up, back, around, and now down. Same thing again. Up, back, around, and down. Up, back, around, and down. Okay? Up, back, around, and down. Also very rhythmic, just like ram's head wedging, but now you're taking it to one side, okay? I'm right-handed, so my spiral is going to be on the right-hand side. If you're left-handed, it's going to be the other way. But as you can see here, my left hand is moving in an ellipse form. Okay? I'm still rocking my body back and forth into it. And I'm pushing down. And I'm just forming this little ball of clay. I'm, I'm moving, I'm, I'm, I'm holding and I'm controlling the same amount of clay the whole time. And I'm letting the table do the rest of the work. That's why it's called wedging. It's like a fulcrum point. Okay? As you can see, you can feel it. You can feel the clay homogenizing and coming consistent. And you can feel when it's pretty much wedged all the way through and all the air bubbles are gone. And now this is where I'll go back to a little bit of ram's horn wedging. I'll grab here to finish it off, to put it on the wheel head. I'll grab back outside, ram's head wedge a few times. And then I'll start rolling, pulling, rolling, pulling, rolling, pulling, rolling, pulling, rolling. Last things last, use gravity and use the flat surface of the table to comb this up and to get this into the form that you want for the wheel head, okay? And as you'll see here, once you're done, you can check if you're learning how to wedge, cut this ball in half. And you'll, as you can see, there's not an air bubble anywhere in sight here, okay? It's a great way of wedging your clay. Let's do it again. Let's see. No air bubbles, okay? At the top, one more. No air bubbles, not an air bubble in the whole piece of clay, okay? So as you can see, and here maybe, I'm a little bit out of breath, you will be breathing heavy. I think I'm about to start sweating, but this is the way to do it. And if you have any questions, you're still struggling with this, please let me know, leave a comment. Tell me how it's going for you. If you're doing this and you feel like you're doing everything right, still struggling and still can't get in this rhythm right here, let me know. I hope that was a help for you, and I hope uh, I saved you a few pieces with air bubbles on this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and leave a suggestion. If you are struggling with any part of the homogenization process or anything else, let me know and I'll make a video.